In this video, we're going to go over how to identify epithelial tissue in histology slides. I'm not going to explain what epithelial tissue is or how to tell one from another. This video is more just to point out different types of epithelial tissue if given a slide. So just a little bit of background though. Um, just remember that epithelial tissue is used to create a border or boundary of something. So you might find these inside organs lining the organs or you might find it on the outside of your skin. That's another good example of epithelial tissue. And so it's creating a boundary or border to the external environment there. Epithelial tissue is always supported by connective tissue and epithelial tissue and connective tissue are going to be separated by a basement membrane. Identifying the basement membrane can be important because it's kind of how you tell the shape of the epithelial cells which is going to lead you to identifying the epithelial tissue. So when we identify epithelial tissue, we do it by two categories. We do it by how many layers there are. So is there just one layer of cells all touching the basement membrane, or is there multiple layers? And the shape of the cell. And by the shape of the cell, we mean the side of the cell. What is the shape of the side of the cell, not the top of the cell? Okay, so with layers, there are three possibilities. You could have a simple layer which means there's only one layer of cells and epithelial cells and they're all touching the basement membrane or you can have what is called stratified when you have multiple epithelial cells all stacked on top of each other so you'll have a bottom layer that is touching the basement membrane and then you have more layers on top of that bottom layer of epithelial cells and then there's a special case called pseudo stratified which looks like it's stratified but all the cells are actually touching the basement membrane so we'll look at example of that and the other category is the shape of the cell and with the shape of the cell there are four different types so we can have squamous which is more of a flat cell so the side of the cell is going to look squished it's going to be wider than it is tall versus cuboidal where the cell is going to be about as wide as it is tall versus columnar where you have the cell is taller than it is wide and then finally transitional which is another special case where the cell is actually going to change shape depending if the organ is full or not. The first slide we're going to look at is a frog skin slide and this is going to be your example for a simple squamous epithelial tissue. And when I zoom all the way in you can clearly see these cells and your first thought is going to be well these don't look squamous at all and they definitely don't look simple. And that's because we're looking at the top of the skin or the tissue here. Now remember, when we're talking about the shape and the layers, we're talking about the sides of the cell. But frog skin is so thin, if we took a cross section of the skin and try to look at the side of the cell, you're not going to be able to see it. The, the cells are too thin and you will not be able to see the squamous there. However, you can infer the simple squamous by looking at the top of the cells. First notice that there are no nuclei stacked on top of each other, so there's only one layer of nuclei, meaning it's simple, right? And look how transparent the cells are. And that's because the cells are so thin that light can easily get through it. All right, so you're going to have to use your imagination a little bit and pretend that you could cut this skin in half and look at the sides of the cell to really see that simple squamous. And one thing you're going to notice throughout this class is that structure is going to equal function. All right, and why would frogs need such a thin layer of skin surrounding their body? And it's because they actually breathe through their skin. All right, respiration can happen through the skin. So having a very thin, simple layer of epithelial tissue will allow easy gas exchange through the skin. The next slide we're going to look at is your jejunum, which is part of your small intestine. And remember, your small intestine is a hollowed out tube. And so we're looking at a cross section of a tube here. So in the center here is what we refer to as the lumen, and this is where food is going to pass through. So food is going to pass through this open space going down the tube. So this is where you're going to find your epithelial layer, because you want to create a boundary or border between your food and the rest of the cells of your small intestine. And so the epithelial tissue is where the nutrients are going to pass from the lumen and into the cells. In the center of your jejunum, you have these folds called villi, and this is really there to increase the surface area of the inside of your jejunum. And just keep in mind, we're looking at a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional structure. So even though these look like islands, it's, they're not islands. They're actually folds inside your jejunum. Just when they cut the jejunum and put it on a slide, it kind of looks like they're separated, when in reality they're not. 
Zooming into these folds at the highest magnification, you can start to see the epithelial tissue. And here we are at looking at the sides of the cell since this is a cross section of the organ. So this is not the top of the cell, this is the side. And since it's the side, we can see the basement membrane, that membrane that separates the connective tissue from the epithelial tissue. So drawing out the basement membrane here, you can see everything that is between the basement membrane and the lumen is epithelial tissue. Your jejunum is going to be your example for simple columnar cells. And it might not seem like it here because the cells are so squished together, but if I draw out a cell, you can clearly see that it's much taller than it is wide, so it is a columnar shape. And there is only one layer of cells touching the basement membrane. There's not multiple cells stacked on top of each other. So since it's one layer of cells and they are taller than they are wide, this is simple columnar. Also, you could see special cells here called goblet cells, and these goblet cells are going to release mucin, which helps make mucus, and you want mucus in your small intestine because it lubricates the food that is passing through your small intestine, allowing the food to pass more easily. The next slide we're going to look at is a cross-section of the kidney to see the kidney tubules, which are all these little tiny tubes that are inside the kidney. When we get a close-up of these kidney tubules, you can start to see the epithelial tissue that is surrounding the lumen. First, we can identify the basement membrane. And as you can see, there's only one layer of cells between the basement membrane and the lumen. So this is going to be an example of a simple epithelial tissue. And as we outline the cell here, you can see the cells are about as tall as they are wide, meaning they're cuboidal. So your kidney tubules is an example of a simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. The next organ we're going to look at is your trachea, and again your trachea is a hollow out tube, so we're going to look towards the lumen to find the epithelial layer. And zooming in here, you will be able to see again your basement membrane separating the epithelial from the connective. And your trachea is going to be your example for pseudostratification, meaning it looks stratified but it's not. And if you look at these cells, I'm going to draw out a couple here. We have tall cells, we have short cells, we have all different sizes of cells. But if you could look closely enough, all these cells are touching the basement membrane. They are not stacked on top of each other. So because they're different sizes, they almost look stratified, especially if you looked at the nuclei. But if you look closely enough, all these cells are touching the basement membrane. So by definition, they are not stratified. They are simple. So that's why we have a special category called pseudostratified. Also here, you could see a couple other structures. You, again, you could see goblet cells, which are going to release mucus to help get some of the stuff that we breathe in out of our lungs and out of our trachea. And we also see the cilia on the top of the cells. So cilia is little hair-like projections coming off the cells. And what these are going to do is move all the mucus upwards. So we are getting rid of any of the dirt or the bacteria that we breathe in throughout the day using the cilia and the mucus created by the goblet cells. And if you look at these pseudostratified cells, the majority, of the, the majority of them are columnar. So we have a very special name for this type of epithelial cell found in your trachea. We call it pseudostratified ciliated columnar cells, meaning they're pseudostratified, looking stratified, but they're not, that they're ciliated because they have cilia on them, and the majority of them are columnar in shape. The next slide we're going to look at is a human scalp. So we are looking at skin here, and there are a bunch of different layers to your skin. So what we see here is the dermal layer, which is mostly connective tissue. And below that we have the hypodermal layer, which is mostly adipose tissue or fat. And then way up here at the top, this little tiny thin purple layer is your epithelial tissue, known as your epidermis. So we're going to zoom in here to the epidermis to see what kind of epithelial tissue this is. So first things first, we could label our basement membrane here, separating out our epithelial layer from the dermal layer, which is our epidermis from our dermis. And now that we have the epithelial layer separated, we could see that this is a stratified epithelial layer. We have a layer of cells that are touching the basement membrane directly, and then we have multiple layers on top of those cells for the epithelial tissue. All right, so we're going to know that there's stratification going on here. So stratified is going to be in the name. But what about the shape of the cell? Where do we find the shape? Do we look towards the basement membrane, the basal layer of the cells? Or do we look towards the apical layer of the cells, which are more towards the outside of the body? Well, the rule of thumb is to always go to the apical layer of the cells to figure out what the shape of the cells. 
so we want to look towards the outside of the body or the furthest away to see the shape of the cells. So here you could see that the, shell, the cells are squamous towards the outside. So this would be considered stratified squamous epithelial tissue. And the last thing you should notice here is this last layer that's all the way on the outside. This is actually dead skin cells. Your skin cells are carotenized, so when they die, they leave behind all the keratin that was inside the cells. So this is the dead skin cell layer here. The last slide we're going to look at is a cross-section of your ureter, which is a tube that connects your kidney to your bladder. And this is going to be your example for transitional cells. And remember what I said before, that transitional cells will sh change shape whether the organ is full or not. So zooming into the lumen here, again, where you're going to find your epithelial tissue, separating the lumen from the rest of the cells. Here you're going to see that the cells are stratified again. But since they're transitional, uh, we do not use the term stratification because transitional cells are so unique and only found in specific organs of the body. So when we say transitional, we already infer that they're stratified. And here, the ureter is going to be empty because this is a cross-section of it and there's no way to keep the urine inside the ureter. So this is what the cells look like when the organ is empty. So they're going to be more of this pillowy, round shape towards the apical edge, the side towards the lumen. So this round shape doesn't really fit into one of the other categories that we saw before. However, when the organ is full, all of these cells are going to be pushed towards the sides and pushed down towards their basement membrane because they're being stretched out. And when they're pushed down, they're actually going to be more of a squamous shape. So this is why they're considered transitional because when the organ is empty, they're more of this round pillowy shape versus when the organ is full, they're going to be a squamous shape. All right, so that is it for the epithelial cells. So remember when trying to identify epithelial cells, you should be looking at the side of the cell, find the basement membrane separating the epithelial cell from the connective tissue, figure out if these cells are simple or stratified or pseudostratified, then figure out the cell shape, whether they're squamous, cuboidal, columnar, or transitional.